but then you see these bands of very distinct cloud cover. That is not rain, that is not snow. Believe it or not, military aircraft flying through the region is dropping chaff. Small bits of aluminum, sometimes it's made of plastic. Now, they won't confirm that, but I was in the Marine Corps for many years, and I'll tell you right now, that's what it is. And now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. In the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Governments have been playing with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. These long white lines that are left in the sky after a jet flies through the air. Is there any truth to the theory that there's chemicals that are released by the government? Absolutely not. What about to control minds? No, they are very much conspiracy theories. HARP, an acronym that stands for High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, has, since it began analyzing the ionosphere in 1993, inspired controversy. Many believe that HARP controls and manipulates the weather, even our minds, inspiring some to actually call the research center, leaving messages screaming about the temperature outside. You guys are killing the planet. It's fucking 80 degrees here in Colorado in February. Some voices on YouTube have also put their HARP theories in the ring, with some claiming they have 100% proof that HARP may have caused Hurricane Harvey. But when you watch these videos, you do not get proof. You get, and this is where things get sad, people who don't even know what HARP is or does and are using the unpredictable nature of the weather as somehow pointing to the likelihood of HARP's sinister involvement. There was some projected paths of it going this way or going up this way to New Mexico, and yet there's this strange thing and then all of a sudden the storm is going this way. I don't know, this is the first time I've ever heard about this harp or even looked into it. Certain ideas surrounding harp may have even inspired violence, with two men stockpiling weapons with the intent to penetrate the facility, saying that HARP was controlling their minds and trapping their souls. Some of these ideas being put forward by Nick Begich in his book, Angels Don't Play This Harp. But what the suspected terrorists did not know is that HARP is not a top secret facility. It's certainly no S4 facility, going as far as to occasionally open its doors to the public for an open house, an open house that Nick Begich oddly declined. They're having an open house today. Yeah, yeah, they have them every couple of years. Isn't it of interest? You're so damn close to it. There's nothing there that I need to see. It's in their technical specifications on what they built, and the rest is, I mean, what is it? But what are some of the main claims of the Begiches of the world and the ever-widening chemtrail community online? Does a rational outside observer have a leg to stand on among these ideas? Let's find out. Geoengineering is the deliberate, large-scale manipulation of certain environmental processes with the intent of mitigating the adverse effects of global warming. After a big volcano like Pinatubo that put a lot of sulfur in the stratosphere, you actually see the whole world get cooler for, say, a year. And not just get cooler, but actually the productivity of plants and ecosystems around the world went up that year. Keith has an idea. Send planes up into the air that release an aerosol to do the trick. According to the bulk of climate scientists, there is a, quote, very high confidence that the global warming measured over the past 50 years is due primarily by human activities. And the claim from those in the geoengineering project is that if humans are already causing the planet to warm, then in principle, they can cause it to cool. And according to Harvard, several attempts at solar geoengineering have already taken place, generously funded by Bill Gates, with Harvard claiming that by the year 2022, future tests could involve seeding the sky with aluminum oxide, even diamonds. 
And it is here where two kinds of skeptics exist. On the one hand, some worry we should not be playing God, that these experiments could have disastrous consequences for humanity and ironically the environment. A study from a team at the University of Reading said, quote, we have shown that one of the leading candidates for geoengineering could cause a new unintended side effect over a large part of the planet, end quote. With even David Keith himself admitting to the possibility of, quote, side effects. Absolutely true that any version of the solar geoengineering will have unexpected side effects, I'm sure, problems, uncertainties. But of course, the state we're in has unexpected uncertainties. But then there is the other hand, those who mirror the above skepticism of mainstream geoengineering, but extend the definition to include not just mitigation of the climate, but the process of control. In 1967, a top secret military program called Operation Popeye was carried out. The US dropped 47,000 canisters of silver iodide over North and South Vietnam in an attempt to extend the monsoon season. It was soon after this that the New York Times broke a story exposing the program, and it was discontinued, causing the USSR and the US to negotiate a ban on the military use of, quote, weather warfare. China has one of the biggest weather-altering technologies on the planet, which famously, in the 2008 Olympics, utilized rocket launchers, anti-aircraft guns, and planes to keep the Bird's Nest Stadium dry. It at least appears they were successful. The truth is that it's very hard to measure these things, although those that do, a researcher at China's Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation said more than 500 burners have been deployed on alpine slots in Tibet and other areas. The data we have collected show very promising results. Results. So it looks like all we can know so far is that some governments have technologies that purport to induce or prevent rainfall, and that depending on the level of already existing precipitation, certain parts of the world seem to respond better to these techniques than others, making places like California, although a place where successful cloud seeding attempts have been done in the past and are attempting to get done now, much more difficult. Whether or not cloud seeding merits the controversy it gets remains to be seen, but the notion that cloud seeding is proof of, quote, chemtrails, which is the paranoid hypothesis that jets are being instructed by elites to spray everyone with chemicals is foolish and logically inconsistent. Because wouldn't the malevolent pilots all over the world have the foresight to understand that they too exist under the clouds that they're spraying on everyone? It's the equivalent of trying to sink the Titanic, only you're still on it and the Titanic is the world. And if chemtrailers cared so deeply about not wanting to inhale chemicals, wouldn't they be protesting refineries? If your concern is breathing in pollution, the place to start would be the factories that are transparently emitting benzene, formaldehyde, mercury, and radon gas everywhere. One doesn't need a conspiracy to know that our air sucks. But with all that said, are there other factors of geoengineering we should be worrying about? And how on point or off are those on the fringes who claim they have evidence that some are using or trying to use the weather with a much more sophisticated level of control and who are doing so with either misguided or even sinister intentions. One piece of evidence that they cite is a research paper produced by the Department of Defense for the Air Force outlining the need to turn their current weather modification ability into a warfighting application, saying, quote, the technology is there, waiting for us to pull it all together. Owning the weather in 2025. But not so fast. This research paper is primarily theoretical, whose main claim is that we should be trying to do this not that we are in fact doing it. It's certainly not evidence that elites are controlling the weather. That said, it does continually reference the ionosphere, that which Harp can probe, as an invaluable necessity in their plan to attain weather control, with no specific mention, however, of said research facility. Skeptic or otherwise, one could call that a coincidence, that the most important variable inside this DOD 
DOD weather control document is the ability to research the exact environmental process HARP has been built to investigate. Combine that with the date of the document following the completion of the HARP facility, and one could build a modestly coherent hypothesis that the Defense Department built HARP with the goal of, quote, controlling the weather. The reason why I say moderately coherent is because in order for this hypothesis to make sense, you have to grant that the seven authors are talking about HARP, but refrain from doing so on purpose. And you also have to grant something else, which we'll get to later. As for the first assumption, it's really difficult for me to believe they weren't talking about HARP when referencing the urgent requirement of ionospheric research as the most important next step in attaining weather control as a weapon. And why do I think that? Because there's no way that the Department of Defense did not know that HARP was the only US technology that could do just that. And let's not forget that HARP began as a military project funded by the Air Force and DARPA. Now, I'm not saying that HARP is being used to control the weather. That's a misunderstanding. I'm saying that according to this document, if ever there were a technology that could aid in the research of, quote, weather control, it's this one, and that it could have been built for that reason. It's certainly easy to posit that HARP was a kind of military stepping stone to achieve a certain set of ambitions, however woo-woo those ambitions might seem to be. I also think I remember hearing about a state representative proposing an anti-geoengineering bill based on this DOD document, but honestly, that just couldn't be right. Right? Consider Secretary of the Air Force Dr. David Walker, who was asked at an appropriations subcommittee what was going to happen to HARP now that the military was done with it. We have finished our, our work that we're interested in doing up there. We've uh, moving on to other ways of uh, managing the ionosphere, which the HARP was really designed to do was to inject energy into the ionosphere, be able to actually control it. And, uh, but that work is, has been completed. But all of this said, the document ultimately highlights the scope of the author's security ambitions, but not necessarily their ability to attain them. So although we will come back to this in part two, along with the second assumption needed for all of this to fit, but I'll leave it here for now with this rough metric that I'm 30% sure that HARP was built with the intent to control the weather. It's whether or not the research was successful in creating this ability I'm much more skeptical of. Someone who disagrees with me and who is perhaps the most outspoken on the topic of sinister geoengineering is Dane Wigington. He who controls the weather will control the world. Anyone who thinks this isn't going on is not living in reality, and the threat is immense and immediate. In the desperate attempt to continue the population's confusion and division on the true state of the unfolding climate collapse, the geoengineers have manufactured Winter Storm Santo in the Great Lakes region by utilizing the global network of ionosphere heaters and microwave transmitters to orchestrate a flow of extremely warm moisture being pumped up from the record warm waters of the Caribbean. This moisture is then seeded with endothermic reactor patented chemical ice nucleation elements. Anyone who thinks that what we see in the sky being emitted from aircraft is not affecting the weather, is simply not living in reality. Dane and his followers often cite Senate documents and patents as proof that a sinister government is secretly geoengineering the climate on a massive scale. But they can never tell us who is doing this or at what times. Specificity is so often a problem when sifting through these kinds of claims. I will admit, however, that the amount of US patents, over 150, on manipulating the climate is interesting. These patents, whose titles I will quote verbatim, range from methods of producing intense artificial clouds, fogs, or mists, an aerial discharge device, a cloud seeding carbon dioxide bullet, method of producing precipitation from the atmosphere, a method of producing cumulus clouds, a process of weather modification by satellite, an electromagnetic energy pulse launcher, and that's just seven out of the more than 150 US patents directly related to either mitigating, or in some cases it would appear entirely creating climatological systems. Air Force document, it's called Owning the Weather 2025. It's from, actually from the Air Force. 